The saccharides consist of two monosaccharides residues, either the same or different monosaccharides joined by a glycosidic bond. We can visualize the formation of a glycosidic bond as a dehydration reaction between the hydroxyl group in one of the anomeric carbon and an alcohol group from the second unit of the monosaccharide. To characterize a disaccharide, we need to know what are the monosaccharides units that are forming it and which anomer, alpha or beta, is part of the glycosidic bond. The most common monosaccharides are glucose, galactose, and fructose. Glucose is found in maltose in many polysaccharides and also in lactose and sucrose. The formation of a glycosidic bond is a dehydration reaction that takes place in at least one of the anomeric carbon and one unit of a second monosaccharide. This is a list of the different glycosidic bonds that we are going to discuss with the structures of disaccharides. The first disaccharide to be discussed is maltose. Maltose is produced by partial hydrolysis of starch by the enzyme amylase. This disaccharide is made of two glucose units. Here we have the structure of glucose in a Fischer projection, open chain, and in Howard projection, the cyclic hemiacetol. The formation of a glycosidic bond will include the hydroxyl from anomeric carbon number one and the hydroxyl group from carbon number four from a second unit. The product of dehydration is a glycosidic bond, which is an acetol because this carbon is attached to two ORs. And observe that in the process, one molecule of water was lost. The formation of a glycosidic bond is also called a condensation reaction or a dehydration reaction, which is the opposite of hydrolysis. If we add water in the presence of enzyme or strong acid, the hydrolysis of the glycosidic bond of maltose will produce two glucose units. As a summary, we can say that maltose is made of two glucose units. The reaction is between carbon number one from one unit and carbon number four from the second unit to produce a glycosidic bond named alpha-1,4, the one from the anomeric carbon and the four from the second unit where the hydrogen is lost to form one molecule of water. The disaccharide of lactose is made out of one unit of galactose and one unit of glucose. Before we make the disaccharide, it's important to look at what are the differences between these two monosaccharides. They are epimeres. The difference is that the orientation of the OH on group on carbon number four, the OH is to the left in galactose when the OH is to the right in glucose. Now we show the Howard projections for the unit of galactose and glucose. This is the anomeric carbon for galactose and this is anomeric carbon for glucose. It has to be the one adjacent to the oxygen forming the pyranose. Now what we see is in the structure of galactose, two hydroxyl groups on the same side or above the overall plane of the ring, and only one is above the overall plane of the ring. 
This is different. This is the anomeric carbon that could be alpha anomer or beta anomer. And both of them can be used for the formation of lactose. However, it is always the beta anomer of galactose that is used to make the glycosidic bond. The dehydration will take place between these two parts to make a beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. Some people cannot digest lactose because the enzyme is missing, the one that can do the hydrolysis. Lactase is not present to hydrolyze this bond. Our summary includes now that the units are one is a beta galactose and an alpha or beta glucose includes the anomeric carbon of galactose and the hydroxyl group on carbon number 4 of glucose to make a beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. Now we will discuss the formation of the glycosidic bond on sucrose or table sugar. This will include the monosaccharides of fructose and glucose. This disaccharide is not a reducing sugar because the glycosidic bond will involve both of the anomeric carbons. When we look at the structures, we have a ketose and an aldose. Sucrose is the most abundant disaccharide found in nature. It is found in fruits, vegetables, and in our diet. Sugar cane and sugar beets are the commercial sources of sucrose used as table sugar to sweeten coffee, tea, soft drinks, ice cream, everything. But nature is very selective. Out of the two different anomers, it is using only beta fructose and alpha glucose to make the glycosidic bond. The dehydration between fructose and glucose to form the glycosidic bond will be using the hydroxyl group of carbon number 2, which is the anomeric carbon, and the hydroxyl group of carbon number 1, which is also an anomeric carbon for glucose. For that reason, you will find in your textbooks that the structure of sucrose will include one sugar on top of the other. It is convenient to place the structure of glucose on top of the structure of fructose. This is the alpha glucose, OH is below the plane, and this is beta fructose to have a dehydration reaction to make a brand new glycosidic bond, which is another acetol, because this carbon now is bonded to an OR and a second OR. As a summary, sucrose is made of beta fructose and alpha glucose and is a glycosidic bond named alpha 1,2.